Welcome to Dying Generation, Episode 5. I am Bunny Williams, and with me is... Stephen Scott Norfolk. And what is going on today? I have gas like you would not believe. All right. On our last episode, the listener, uh, Bill, our listener, might have heard that I was in jail for a week, and they fed me a banquet dinner, those 88-cent banquet TV dinners, every single day, twice a day, sometimes three times a day, and every fucking one of them had corn. (laughs) And as I heard a a friend uh, who was a plumber say once is, in all my years as a plumber, I've learned one thing, and that's that people just don't chew their corn. <laughs> but yeah, so now I'm 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 like totally bloated. I, my stomach looks like Dizzy Gillespie's cheeks right now. It's not good. Are they loud? They are kind of squealy. I would hate to be, see, that's the thing is that I think what they do is they feed you all this corn when you're like in jail or prison or something so that, you know, if you have a high, tight, squealy fart, they're like, oh, there's a tight asshole right there. But if you have like a really loud, like bottom, heavy, brassy sort of fart, they're like, oh, God, that's, that's, you don't want any of that. So they can like, you just weed you out going through the food line. You're like. Oh, there's that's the one I want to get up inside right there, buddy. Yeah, that's that's going to be like a thirteen year old right there. I think it, I seriously think it's on purpose. I really do. Yeah. So, yeah. things going with you? Uh, pretty good. But when you were in there, were you like ready to go all Rorschach on them? You know, all Rorschach. Like, yeah, you're not in here with me. Or whatever the fuck he said, where he basically threatened the whole prison. You you've not seen Watchmen? Oh yeah, I've seen Watchmen, but I I've only seen it once and was so distracted by the huge blue penis that I just couldn't concentrate on the rest of the film. Yeah, that's, uh, actually that's what a, that's what a friend of mine said to me. He was like, "Dude, man, it's like you know, sitting there watching it, and there's this giant blue penis flopping around." I'm like, "Dude." Be be a little more closeted, why don't you? Why are you bothered by the big blue penis? It shouldn't bother you at all unless you're looking at it going, yum. Mmm, <laughs> mmm, blue penis. I, I, I have actively looked for it, you know. I mean, it doesn't just jump out at you, you know. It does in 3D, you, apparently. You, you, in 3D? <laughs> <laughs> What would you see in the red lens? <laughs> yeah, exactly. There you go. No, it was there was those those polarized lenses, so the red and blue didn't come into account. Yeah, yeah. That's like I have a copy of uh, My Bloody Valentine 3D, the new version. The new version. And, yeah, uh, I've seen the new one. And the glasses are green and tan, so it doesn't mess yeah. with the blood. It's actually really cool. And I am a huge, huge fan. That's my favorite slasher film from the 80s is uh, My uh, my Bloody Valentine. And when I heard they were doing a remake, I'm like, oh, my God, no, please don't, 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 don't bastardize my childhood. And then I saw it, and I was like, wow, this is fucking great. I love this movie, and ran out and bought it. Yeah, I saw that in the drive-in. Uh, I just forget what the hell I saw it with. My I saw it. I it saw might it have with been like an American Werewolf in London or something like that. I saw it with Student Bodies. Remember that movie? You saw Student Bodies in the theater? I didn't no, know. In drive in. In the drive in. Really? Yeah, the drive in with my bloody Valentine. And you know why I saw Student Bodies? Why? Because I auditioned for that film here in Houston. You did? Yeah. I went up and yeah, auditioned. I liked that movie. And auditioned and failed. Yeah, it's an excellent fucking movie. I like that movie, but that's one of those movies that hardly anybody remembered. Mm-hmm. What about you know? Mother's and, Day? And my absolutely favorite fucking bit, 
Because you remember, like, right around the middle of the movie, mm-hmm. they cut to the guy in the suit in the office. Yeah. And he introduced him as, himself as the producer of the film. Yeah. And he was like, um, you know, current demographics show that R-rated movies earn much more revenue than PG or even G-rated movies. So as the producer of this film, I'd like to take the opportunity to say, go fuck yourself. Because <laughs> that yeah, was back I, in the day where that was the difference. It was one fuck between a PG and an R. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so in this one brilliant scene, he just kicked the rating of the movie up. Yeah. I told you he was doing it. <laughs> but I auditioned for the I auditioned for the part of the killer. Really? Yeah. And the failed miserably. Matter. It was yeah. it was it was the brown haired boy who was running around in the, the long green rubber gloves. I would have to watch it again. I didn't even yeah. see it terribly long ago. Yeah, yeah but my other wrong. my other favorite from that era is Mother's Day. Do you Mother's remember that Day. one? Mother's yeah. Day? You never saw Mother's Day? Oh, Mother's Day. You kind of cut out yeah. a little there. I thought we were still oh, talking yeah. about Mustang. Uh, yeah. Mother's, Mother's Day. Oh, God. And I saw Mother's Day in the theater with my mother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the only horror movie I, I saw I, in the I, theater. I spent most of the movie going like, this is kind of awesome, but I can't show it. <laughs> yeah. Especially the rape Mom. sequence on the... The rape sequence huh? on the uh, muscle building equipment. Yeah. In the front yeah. yard where War Mom is like egging them on. Come on, get in there. They supposedly did a remake of that. Which uh, I have they never did. Seen. They did. I haven't seen that either. We're, we're kind of getting into the Pope on film territory here, aren't we? Thank you. Uh, we are, but we can. You know, this we is can. the we can. show. This is the everything show. So, what about the uh, Battleship Potemkin? Uh, the Battleship Potemkin, <laughs> I'm pretty sure I tried to watch it once. I definitely tried to watch Birth of a Nation, and I couldn't get too fucking far into it. Cause it was just really? Boring. You couldn't get into Birth of a Nation? Yeah. You fucking pinko communist. But if you, if you give me a fucking horror movie that's silent, it's like, it's fucking awesome. Like Nosferatu or even Metropolis. Yeah, which I'm kind of horror and sci fi. Yeah, I'm kind of torn between like um, Nosferatu and the Cabinet of Dr. Caligari. I, I know, that's like that's like one of your favorite favorite movies, I know. Now, uh, uh, did you ever see the version of Metropolis they did with uh, the, did, they did the, uh, the uh, restored print with the modern rock music in it? I. Well, it didn't have the modern rock music, but I think it was the original cut. Well, this was this was a restored print. It had songs in it by like Queen and all these other bands. Yeah, no, I definitely it was didn't. Yeah. Very, very fucking cool. Yeah, that's like one thing that I missed. Uh, I had a chance to see in Houston was um, the original 1914. I think it is Beauty and the Beast, the French version, yeah. the silent film. With a, a live orchestra conducted by Philip Glass for a score that he wrote for the film. Yeah. Now that that would have been because I'm a huge Philip Glass fan. If you people haven't looked into Philip Glass, definitely look up. Uh, at least an introduction to him would be uh, "Songs for Liquid Days." is a a great album by him. Uh, it actually has vocals by. Uh, I believe one song is by David Byrne. There's another song by a vocal group from New York called The Roaches, a female vocal group and stuff with all his uh, music behind it. He's a very interesting uh, modern uh, classical music composer. Hmm. So, kitties, check him out. This is your this is your elder speaking. <laughs> And I'm not talking about the Elder Scrolls Online either. God damn it. <laughs> Sorry, I, I got lost in thinking about how I was going to try Lightning Bob next. 
Oh, don't do that. Not while we're recording this show. Whenever whenever you start lighting, man, you really got to start with the gels. With the gels? gels yeah. Yeah. The gels are just fun, man. You yeah. Know, and you oh, yeah. You start seeing different possibilities for just swapping out the gels. And they were fucking cheap. You know? I got a sampler pack. It came with 30 sheets. Um, 30 different colors? colors. What? 30 different colors? Yeah, for like 40 bucks. Wow. That's pretty amazing. And on the LCD lights, they're not going to burn out. No, because the LCD lights are cool. Yeah, I mean, these are the professional Hollywood Roscoe gels that yeah. we're talking about. You yeah. know, so they're designed to put on those fucking hot uh, Ari yeah, lights. The, uh, yeah, the Ari's. I, was, I couldn't think of the name. That's the... Whenever I was in high school uh, and we did drama, we had actual Ari lights on our stage. And yeah. uh, the gels, so the gels was... You too many or burn the fucking place down. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, that and you could only use, like, one gel per performance. Uh, yeah. And then you'd have to replace the gel because it would just warp uh, from the heat. And, bam, being yeah. on stage, there were, there were some plays. And this, we're talking about Texas here, okay? We're talking it's like 105 degrees outside. It's maybe, if you're lucky, 80 degrees inside the theater packed full of 250 people, and you're on stage in like a full suit with, you know, a coat and a vest and a shirt and slacks and underwear and all that, and just literally, you know, pouring sweat under those light and your makeup's running. It was like the incredible melting man. Which is which surprises me that we never did that as a stage production because it probably would have been really good, you know, some some Cairo syrup and uh, and cotton balls. Isn't that what they use? In the Incredible the Melting Man? Man. Yeah, I'm not sure, but somebody ridiculously famous fucking did it. Like yeah, or something like that. Yeah, somebody. I gotta I gotta look that up now. Somebody really like surprising, like Rick Baker. Mm-hmm. Something like that. Yeah, I know it's. I know it was somebody big, and it was one of their earlier films. And, so and in, fa- in fact, it. I, and in fact, I think it won, uh, or was nominated at least for special effects, uh, makeup effects that year. That couldn't have. Melting Man, the Incredible Melting Man. Yeah, dude, that was made in like what seventy six. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Makeup effects were not very far advanced at that point. We were just getting into the new generation of of makeup artists and stuff. It wasn't until 1980 that they actually started using, like, latex for wounds and stuff like that. And one of the the first, huh? 77? 77. Okay. And I think one of the first films to actually use latex for wounds and stuff was Friday the 13th. Because I remember how everybody went nuts over Tom Savini and uh, his makeup artistry on that film. Yeah, you know, and and it was really good at the time. You know, it was amazing at the time. The, I mean, the arrow through the neck still today is a beautiful piece of piece of work. Yeah, but like Dawn of the Dead, the effects in it are like fucking laughable now. Oh yeah, I know. Some of the bites, you're just like, wow, that's yeah. rubber. <laughs> That's yeah. rubber right there. And but like, the thing the was, that it exploded was totally fake. But, but even then, I mean, you look at at like the part in the movie where the guy is in the uh, thing checking his blood pressure and he gets pulled out and his arm gets ripped off, and you can see yeah. every single tendon and vein and muscle. It's like they built an actual freaking arm. It wasn't just cover. It was like the entire interior of, you know, the musculature and everything. Yeah. And even though it looks cheesy today, the, I mean, at that time, when we saw it, it, it blew our fucking minds. Oh, well, the, the stomach rip with the intestines. Oh, yeah. That was a beautiful, beautiful little piece of work right there. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and I loved, well, I loved how clean the intestines were. Yeah. You know, it just made... Cow, me cow's cool. intestine. Yeah, well, from the story that I heard is that um, that was, like, Tasso, who was, like, Tom Cavini's best friend and assistant. 
Uh-huh. Um, he really didn't want to have the pickups on him. He was just, like, really kind of freaked out about it. So he, like, just washed them with an inch of their lives. <laughs> you know? Those are the cleanest and looking guts I've ever seen. They, they're beautiful. They're, they're shiny. <laughs> they, were, they were Simonized, for God's sakes. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Simonized. There you go. wax. A hint of turtle wax. wax. Yeah. <laughs> that made them glisten. Made them glisten when they came out. It was like it was like the it was like the shell of a Corvette. Somewhere in the distance, Phil Collins played. Do what? Somewhere in the distance, Phil Collins plays. Really? So really low as you're looking at the intestine, and and. You have to smell the turtle wax. Like Listen for Bill. Come in the air. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Oh, oh Lord. <laughs> oh, Lord. I don't know why that reminds me of Eat It by Weird Al Yankovic. Yeah. But the yeah. head exploding in the opening scenes, the apartment building scenes. Yeah. Which is one of my favorite parts of the movie. Um. Now my favorite they, head. They go in the room. The one zombie is standing there, and they shoot it with the fucking shotgun. And his head blows up. Yeah, that is my, so rubber. My <laughs> uh, my favorite head explosion though is Scanners. Oh, Scanners was an excellent head explosion. It's fucking beautiful, fucking. That that was Cronenberg, right? That was Cronenberg. Yeah. Did you know he has a novel out? No. Yeah, he wrote a novel, and apparently it goes back to his original work. Like, very freaky, that be, very, that, that gr- nice very grotesque and gruesome and terrifying. A lot, of his, a lot of his recent stuff has just been a... Movies, a yeah. A bit too far out there. Yeah. You know? And yeah. it didn't really make much sense. There were, like, a lot of plot holes and things like that. Yeah. Um, well, you know, it's like not I Hollywood if there isn't plot holes. Yeah, I watched that one, Cosmopolitan, I think it's called. Yeah, I didn't see that one. With the kids from Twilight. With the kids from Twilight. Oh, really? That's his name. Yeah. Um, and it was interesting, but it wasn't interesting enough to keep me hanging on. Yeah. Well, I heard A History of Violence was very good. History of Violence was fucking excellent. Yeah. I've never seen that it was, actually, but that's but that's it's it's barely a Cronenberg movie. Well, see, I stopped watching Cronenberg after Dead Ringers. Yeah, I was so disenchanted by Dead Ringers. I was just like, yeah, he's done. I kind of find Existence kind of fun, but I, actually, I did see Existence. It was it was good, but yeah, it's, to me, it's not the Cronenberg. Videodrome, Scanners, uh, Rabid. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, Shivers. those those are crew. Shivers is on Shivers is on Netflix now. Now which Netflix one is Washington Shivers? Again. That's the one with the um parasite that gets loose in the hotel and turns everybody into sixteen zombies. Oh, uh, okay. And he also did the brood, I right? I think Marilyn Chamber might Marilyn Chambers might be in it. Yeah, he did the brood also, right? Uh, the brood. Um, are you talking about the? That... No, that's Nightbreed. Sorry, sorry. Um, and that's that's Wes Craven. I hated Nightbreed. Oh God, I, I hated that. And I hated Nightbreed. people under the stairs. Well, I know. I know Craven wrote it. I find. I find people. Uh, I like people under the stairs, and I like Nightbreed. They both have a good camp value in it. But Wes Craven was in that movie. He actually acted in that, so that's what was tripping me up there. The Brood, I'm not sure, though. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was Cronenberg, because I think that was the movie he made after Rabid. Yeah. Yeah. I remember getting my dad to take me to see Rabid when it was in the theater. We were up in this uh, place called the Wisconsin Dells. Hey, all, all the people up in the Wisconsin Dells, yo! 
And uh, there was a poster for it that had Marilyn Chambers on it. It was basically just her looking crazy with blood all over her, right? And I was like, oh, my God, Dad, I have to see this movie. He was like, all right, I got nothing to do right now. So my mom took uh, my brother's – no, no, just my brother and my sister, because my other brother hadn't been born yet, and took them swimming. We went, we went to go see Rabbit, and here is – it is Marilyn Chambers, right, that's in it? Yeah. Run, running around with a mouth in her armpit. <laughs> oh my god, dude! I'm like, to me, that's Cronenberg right there. You know, that's that's the shit. Cronenberg was the brood. Mm-hmm. You know. Okay, hey, I'm good. My brain's not completely You're gone. You good? You're good. My, my brain is not completely gone. Yeah, the brood's a good movie. It's actually very scary. I, I I'm just thinking how how. Like, to have somebody scream while blood gets splashed in their face, who better than a porn star to do that? That's like a role of porn Exactly. Star. They're, they're porn used to the money movie. shot. They're used yeah. to the money shot. Yeah, and how often in their own careers have they completely acted that they enjoy having cum squirt in their eyes? You know? That's like That's like... My brother and I, my older brother Chuck and I saw this porno. It was a Japanese porno. And there's this yeah. Japanese woman and she's on on her knees and she's looking up at the camera while four guys like squirt off on her face and she's rubbing the cum all over her face going, I'm so happy. I'm so happy. <laughs> it was fucking awesome. I'm like, now that, that my friends is a porn classic right there. I wish I could remember what the name of it was. Now, the strangest porno I've ever seen, I went over to a friend's house and we found a bunch of pornos in his parents' uh, closet that were on Super 8. Yeah. And uh, there was a porno of a pregnant woman, like nine months pregnant, who was like squeezing milk out of her breasts. And I was just looking at it going... Takashi Takashi Miike's... uh... Visitor Q. Have you ever seen really? that? Really? No. Oh, Takashi and Mike is a fucked up dude. Oh, no, I've, yeah. I've seen stuff by him. I just haven't seen Visitor Q. Visitor my brother, Q. My brother Tim is all about that movie. Yeah? About Visitor yeah. Q? Yeah. Oh, it's just fucked up. It, it's kind of a one watch for me. You know, one and done. Yeah. yeah. I don't really need to go back to it too often. It opens up with a father fucking his daughter who is a prostitute. Yeah. And he leaves the money on the dresser on his way out. Yeah. And it's like, okay. (laughs) There you go. Do you know, interesting Japanese fact, do you know that in the subways in Japan during the 80s, there were vending machines that used to sell used teen girl panties? Yes. Yeah, I heard about that. Uh-huh. Okay. Hi, Japan. What <laughs> in the fuck? <laughs> I mean, the people the people who brought you tentacle porn. Yeah. You know, what, what the fuck is going on over there? I mean, they have the best electronics in the world and the most fucked up sex shit. There is, now this is going to be a weird ass fucking segue. But there is this really cool cooking show, and I'm looking it up on Netflix because I can't remember the name. Okay, the segue from tentacle porn to cooking show. This and this has to be yeah. Iron Chef. No, he travels. <laughs> he travels from place to place, mm-hmm. um, like like culture to culture. Okay. It's not Anthony okay. Bourdain, is it? Yes. Yes, I love. Yeah, him. I couldn't figure out how to say his name. <laughs> yeah, I fucking love Anthony Bourdain. He's fucking. He's he's drunk half and the fucking went, time. And he went to he went to Japan and he interviewed the guy who is known as the inventor of tentacle porn. Wow. That's Was he half show, smashed dude. when he did it? What? Was he half smashed when he did it? Um. Because that, that show, any of his shows, there's like two different shows by him, and 50% of the show is him getting smashed out of his fucking mind. It's great. I fucking love watching. I, 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 get, I get a contact drunk 
just from watching the show. <laughs> they drink so much on it. Yeah. So that was that was the segue, and I told you it was going to be a rough one. That was pretty rock. Good cooking show. I mean, that was that was that was some Oregon Trail shit right there. <laughs> Do you remember that game? I, I never played Oregon Oregon Trail. You never played Oregon Trail. Yeah. All right, kiddies, if you're out there, there is an Oregon Trail simulator online. You must play this game. It is one of the funnest games you will ever play. And it's really? the graphics the graphics are crap, but it is so much fun to play. I and it's just so crazy. Because you like have to keep this wagon train alive as it's traveling the Oregon Trail. And you have to make decisions. It's almost like the precursor to like Sim City or something like that or, or, or Tamagotchi. Really? Yeah. It's extremely huh. fun. I even played it as an adult and enjoyed it. I'm gonna, but I'm I, gonna have to look that up. If you find yeah, but I know there are simulators there. online. Yeah. I never got too terribly into gaming. You Neither know, did the, I. The yeah. When it, when video games first come out, I mean, we had Pong at our house. We were the coolest house in the neighborhood, you know. And it was like, yeah. you know, eight hundred dollars. And back then, kids, eight hundred dollars was like three thousand. And. uh <clears throat> and we had it, and it was cool, and, you know, I played it, but it's just, video games piss me off. I'm a sore oh, loser. Yeah. I don't like getting beat, <laughs> especially by a piece of machinery, you know? If I'm going to have a piece of machinery beat me, it's going to be a Japanese robot. I can I can take that in something like, you know, the older arcade games like Defender or Robot. Galaga. Like that. Where, 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 if you get killed, it's like, well, what the fuck did you expect? <laughs> you you know? lost 75 cents. That's what the fuck. <laughs> you used to get pissed off. You remember Dragon's Lair? I hated that one. I hated that like, one, man. The cartoon First game was like, you had, to, you had to, like, you had to flick the controller right at the right second in order to make the cartoon go to the correct screen in order to move on. And it would, like, always yeah, fail. Did. And so you're just, like, pumping quarters into it all day long. You'd spend, like, $10 and not even, you know, get to the castle and shit. Yeah, no, I I, I just thought, like, this is not a game. <laughs> and you know who that was? Who? Don Bluth. I, I, I can't place his name. I'm thinking Arrested Development. That can't be right. <laughs> no. The Secret of Nim. Really? Yes. That was Don Bluth who designed the, the cartoon for that game. Yeah. Yeah. I, I remember any kind of science fiction or fantasy movie before yeah. it came out. You would have to get a There was a video game. Arcades. Like fucking yeah. Tron. Oh, my God. And and Crow. I played Crow. Oh, I never <laughs> I played, played Crow because they used Krull. to piss me off, dude. No, what I played was the... Uh, there was a Star Wars game where you actually sat inside of it and you were the TIE fighter going after the Death Star. Yeah. That one was really cool. I, I spent a lot, a lot of money on that one. But I just, yeah, I, my games are driving games. I like driving games. Yeah. And shit. But I don't like, like, uh, you know, one of those games where you get out and you beat the prostitutes, you take her money and shit like that. What was the name of that game? Or, uh... Car Wars? No, it wasn't Car Wars. It was, I can't remember what the name of it was. It was like a really super popular game. Everybody played it. It was, it was, it was a fairly modern game. It was well, like a PlayStation Position or something. Or Spy Hunter. Yeah, no, know. this was more yeah. modern than that. This oh, was like on PlayStation oh. and stuff. And then there was, uh, oh, just games. I, do you remember Carmageddon? I, I I heard of it. I, I never played. Oh, my game. God. I used to love that game. You could, like, run over people for points. It was like Death Race okay. 2000. When we were working in Gateway, Troy, your friend Troy. I yeah. I friend Troy. Yeah. Um, he used to talk Troy about it a lot. Huh? Troy Chiosh. Yeah. And yeah. that is, and if you saw how his name was spelled, that is not how it should be pronounced. And I, I I played like Red, Redneck Rampage instead. Oh yeah, 
I love getting the uh, the alien arm with the laser gun in it, and you'd like pull the nerve endings to shoot the gun. <laughs> yeah. I used to love that game, Redneck Rampage. Love, hell yeah! I loved that one fucking level ending, which was fucking genius. Because you get to the end of the level and you look around and nothing's happening, and you look around again and you're like, oh fuck, man, what do I have to do? to end this level. Yeah. And then you had that guy who followed you the whole time, the really stupid guy. Yeah. He's just he's just standing there going <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> for the whole time and you're looking around <laughs> you're looking around, you open up doors and stuff like that, all the game kind of stuff you do, until finally that fucking laughing just overtakes you and you hit that bastard in the head with a crowbar. Uh huh. And level over. And then the level ends. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that is the most genius thing I've ever seen uh, in a game. <laughs> you know, you know what I found online the other day. What this uh, this uh, uh, Quake the remake? Yeah, it's the original Quake game, but with high definition graphics like Quake GL. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. I uh, downloaded it for my computer. It works on Windows 7 and everything. It's really cool. So I've been messing with that because I love Quake. Love me some Quake. Didn't like Quake 3, though. Quake 3 sucked. Yeah. I kind of stopped at Doom. Did you? <laughs> yeah. That's like they have a new Wolfenstein funny. game out, right? What? They have a yeah. new Wolfenstein game out, Wolfenstein New Order. You know what the yeah. minimum requirements for that game is? No. An i7 quad core has the minimum requirements of the game. I'm like, are you shipping? That's like that was, you know, two years ago was like one of the highest end computers you could buy, and that's the minimum requirement for this game. Yeah, I wanted to get it because apparently there's a new Doom coming out. Really? So you probably have to you'll probably have to have an i14, uh, you know, 16 core processor in order to play it. You know. Yeah. Uh, so, so like, when it came around to when my mother was dying to kind of lighten up the mood here a little bit, uh, that's, <laughs> when, that's when the machine gun kind of stand-up machine gun games started getting hot. Oh, yeah, like Duck Hunt and stuff like that? Yeah. Um, yeah. So that, that used to be a big tension relief. You know, shit around the house would start getting a bit too heavy. I would go grab, like, ten bucks and quarters. And just spend the whole thing in the fucking machine, just going like, get some, get some, get some. <laughs> yeah, I like the especially like the older ones that actually shot real BBs at the targets and stuff. Do you oh, remember those? Yeah, those mm-hmm. ones were cool because you can hear them go ting, ting, ting off the target. Yeah, back in the early days, back in the early days, you used to have things like that in Penn Station. Yeah. Now, of course, they're in they're in Colorado Springs. Have you? Have you been to the arcade in Manitou Springs? Uh, I've like walked through it. You should go there. They have those games there. Yeah. Yeah, they have those original shooters that like actually shoot the BBs and stuff. Yeah. You know? I remember in Penn Station, they had this thing that I just thought was fucking awesome. Just kind of for, for like the idea. Basically, it was it was a, a, a Zoltar machine, like from the movie Big. Yeah. Okay. It was just a stupid fortune telling thing, so like not really a game. Yeah. <clears throat> but what they did is it was a big fucking box, and they projected an actual woman's face. Oh uh, yeah, I remember that one. On it was like a, almost those... like a hologram or something. Yeah, like, like they would project it on one of those, uh, like fake, like those plain Halloween masks, you know, yeah. the, the small white. Yeah. You know? And they would project it on that so it had some depth. Yeah. That reminds me of seeing, we went, whenever I was in college, I was in an art class, and we went to go see an uh, installation art project in Houston. Right. And the coolest thing I have ever ever seen in my life were these itty-bitty little, like, um, 
there were these little dolls that just had like balloon heads. They were like the shape of a balloon. They were made out of cloth. Yeah. And then and then they had these itty bitty little cameras that were like projecting faces onto the front of the thing, right? And there was this one that was sitting there going, Help me. Help. Help me. Help help me. Help me. Help. And it was like the coolest thing. I was like, Oh my god, I want that for my living room. <laughs> you know? I want that worse than I want like an original H. R. Giger painting, you know? It was the uh, coolest thing I'd ever seen in my life. <laughs> oh man, I want his furniture. Oh, I know. I what about oh, the guy from? Have you ever seen the microphone stand from the guy from Corn? No. That was designed by H.R. Giger. Really? No. Oh yeah, it's a woman's body, a really thin, frail woman's body. It is so fucking badass. Really? And the guy had it commissioned by H.R. Giger and fucking takes it on tour with him every time they go on tour. Of course, he's dead now, isn't he? Uh, H.R. Giger, yeah. Yeah, Hans, Hans Reyes. Is, is that what his name was? Yep, Hans Reyes Giger. Yeah, I was a uh, huge fan of, of Giger. I had uh, this one painting by him, and it was just a, it was just a, uh, not even a print or lithograph. It was out of this big, like, uh, poster book. And it was called Lee 2, and it was a woman's face that had, like, um, tentacles and stuff coming off the sides and little penises yeah. on her forehead and stuff. It was really cool. And uh, I had it hanging uh, in our house, in our apartment, for a long time. And the kids used to love this thing. They didn't recognize they were – they weren't even penises. They were, like, condoms on her forehead. And they didn't recognize what they were or anything. And they just loved that painting. And whenever we moved from Pueblo to Colorado Springs, it – disappeared somehow because my wife hated it or my ex-wife I, hated it. I fell in love with um, the original Lee when it was on the, the cover of the second issue of Omni Magazine. Oh, yeah. It blew me away. And it's been like computer wallpaper at home since like 94. Yeah, I know. I've seen it. <laughs> you know, I actually have some copies of Omni Magazine and yeah. Epic. Do you remember Epic Illustrated? Epic it was like a sci fi fantasy book that was supposed to compete with heavy metal. Uh, it, it sounds familiar. It sounds like it was a, a Warren publication. I actually still have copies of that magazine. I also really? still have, I still have my alien photo novel. Like this big eight by ten thing that's like frames from the movie telling the entire story of the movie. Yeah. Yeah, it's very cool. I, I looked on last time I looked on eBay, it was selling for like fifty bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Excuse me, goodness, there's that gas I was telling you about. Holy crap. Yeah. She, um, my ex-wife, after after she was already my ex-wife. She had gone back home to Switzerland for a little while, and she went and visited Geeker's Castle, and she brought me back kind of like a postcard book. Yeah, I had one of those. Yeah. And it had, like, the did, did it have Landscape 4, the uh, red babies all crushed together? I'm pretty sure it does. I haven't looked oh. at it in a while. Dude, I used, to, I used to have an 8 by, or no, 11 by 17 print of that. Yeah. And stuff. My wife made me take it down. She's like, that's so gross. I'm like, it's not gross. It's disgusting. It's aborted babies. I said, no, it's not aborted babies. It is cloned babies being grown as soldiers in a pit. I said, that's what it is. Well, I don't care. It's it's scary. Take it down. It scares the kids. I'm like, no, it doesn't. The kids love it. (laughs) I I think Jeannie would have a problem with if I hung something like that up, too. (laughs) Yeah. Well, yeah. (laughs) In, in the in the the words of Captain Pete from the original stage play of Pee Wee Herman, and yeah. women. <laughs> ah, like Pee Wee. Like watching horror movies, it's really kind of hard to gauge, like what she would like, you know, and what she what she wouldn't. 
And yeah. what it kind of comes down to is she doesn't like anything that's, like, really realistic. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, even though, like, like hard, really like, like hard candy or something like that. Exactly. Yeah. You know, is that really man like that devil's rejects or anything like that? You dude, know? Uh, hard candy when she's like doing the bit where she's castrating the guy. Yeah. Woo! Good lord, dude. That is some man, hard like, shit. A few people have out I, there have not seen hard candy. It is Ellen Page's finest performance in any film. Oh, she was hands absolutely amazing down. in that. Hands fucking down. And yeah, she was incredible. I literally almost turned it off when I first watched it. I know it's hard to watch because it's that the first it's that minutes are really realistic. hard. The first twenty minutes are really really hard to fucking get through, you know. And I'm just kind of sitting there like, what the fuck do I want to be watching this shit? You know. This, now you. Yeah, I, now I don't you, want to see this. You know what I had a hard time getting through? And this is going to be surprising because it was a Sally Field movie. What? Have you ever seen an eye for an eye? No. Oh, my God, dude. There is a scene where she is in her car stuck in traffic, and it's her daughter's birthday, and she has gone out to get something, and her teenage daughter is at home. And while she's on the phone with her teenage daughter, somebody breaks into the house and brutally rapes and murders her on the fucking phone. And it's almost fucking unbearable. I mean, I I had nightmares about this movie. Really? And then the end of the film is fucking brilliant. I mean, it is one of the most incredible fucking thrillers I've ever seen in my life, and almost nobody's ever heard of this movie. Yeah. But the the sequence where she's on the phone with her daughter telling her, it's going to be okay, just do what he says. You're just like, oh, I mean, it's just, it's so fucking terrifying that you just, it's it's almost, I mean, it's almost as hard to watch as the first, like, 20 minutes of Saving Private Ryan. Literally. Yeah, she she wouldn't be able to watch that, but then she she could sit through like the thing without any kind of a problem. Well, and yeah, I, because I that's so fantastical. So trippy and so exactly, exactly. And she's like, well, that's not real, and then she can deal with it, you know. Yeah, Whereas, I, I, was, I, I find those images so horrific. Yeah, know? like the head, the head dripping off the body and then growing legs and running away, dude. That freaks me out every time oh, I fucking see it. Oh. Awesome. <laughs> and what the fuck happened to Rob Bottin, man? I don't know, but I had a That's friend. I had a friend that worked on Rob Bottin's team on that film. Yeah. A guy named Kevin Ellis. Kevin, yeah. if you ever hear this, buddy, I'm giving you your props, man, because you uh, you did some amazing work on that. <laughs> But uh, yeah, what, whatever, whatever did happen to Rob Bottin? Wasn't wasn't he wasn't the one who did the howling, was he? He did the howling too. Yeah. Okay, maybe that was it because that werewolf at the end that D. Wallace turns into. Oh, that was a career killer right there. I, I think he did that before. Did he? I think he did the thing after. Yeah. Because that that was just oh. <laughs> Every time I see that film, I cringe. And if you watch yeah, that movie actually, today, man, the makeup is so fucking awful. Yeah, but but I really kind of like the werewolf transformation, you know. But if you watch uh, it today, it's so rubbery and so mechanical, and you're just like, it's hard to watch. I watched it like about yeah. months ago. Yeah, but I, I I really liked makeup that that had that had some kind of movement in it, you know. Well, yeah, I mean, at the uh, time, at the time. Mind-boggling, but it yeah, it just does not hold up. That's why I tried to put in the puffers in the aliens in um, Biggest Story Ever. Yeah, you know, and it, and it, it worked on Bobby, but it didn't work on Kevin at all. Yeah, and they can find that where. Uh, that would be on my YouTube page, uh, Undead Film. Uh, sorry, Undead Cow Film. I couldn't get Undead Cow Studio. Oh, you couldn't? Um, yeah, no. And I, I think the reason why is I think I already have it, and I don't know anything about it. <laughs> you know? Uh, you don't remember the password or anything? 
Yeah. <laughs> um, and you can find everything there. You can find you can find um, the playlist for Dying Generation, the Pope on Film. <clears throat> Bob is there, and a few more other shows that that I want to do. Cool. Very cool. So, so you people get out there and take a look at that stuff. It's quality, just like the show you're listening to right now. Yeah, I got to get with Bill Baker and talk about um, talk about doing a podcast with him. He's the guy who does the zombie gnomes in this area, Dark Side Creations. Um, fucking excellent work, these zombie gnomes. We have one of them. Named yeah, I, I've seen the pictures of them. Yeah. Um, so creepy, he had to make an appearance in Bob. <laughs> you know, oh, yeah. He's in there. Um, so I got to talk to him. There's also this girl in this area who likes to cosplay a zombie, you know? So, like, any kind of event or anything like that where there could be any kind of cosplay, she she does a zombie. Yeah. <laughs> I want to see if she could do a one-minute, um, like, ice column for zombies. Oh, yeah. There you go. You know? We'll shoot it in the graveyard. The graveyard, the graveyard, I forget which one it is. I forget what it's called. But they're really liberal about shooting there. So. Now, if you're ever now if you're ever attacked by a crowbar, this is what you want to do. Exactly, yeah. That yeah. sort of thing. And, and I'm thinking that, like, I would shoot, you know, if she goes for it, because I haven't even brought it up to her yet. Yeah. Because um, I'm just not ready. Um, yeah. We have a letter from Susie. She wants to know how to get a good bite on a thigh. We're going to yeah, take yeah, answers like, from our listeners. Yeah, and then, <laughs> and, you know, we'll we'll shoot like 10 or 20 episodes, okay, uh-huh. and start putting them out there and really work it to see if people will email us. Yeah. You know, and then she'll just start doing the letters. Yeah. You know? Yeah, sort of like a... uh, Abby style. Yeah, that's what I was going to say, Dear Abby, for zombie. Mm Mm-hmm. Exactly. What do you do 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 about that whole pesky jaw falling off thing? Exactly. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. There you go. 12 gauge galvanized wire. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) You want to go to your local Ace Hardware. Most 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 of them by now have the windows busted out, so it should be easy entry. Yeah. And stuff. Well, it is getting kind of late in the evening here. Okay. So I think we might have to bring the show to a close. Okay, dude. Anything else you want to pimp? Go ahead and pitch your stuff. All right. Uh, I have Haunted Trailer starring Ron Jeremy as the demon, a horror comedy, award-winning horror comedy. It was the... uh, Chicago Horror Film Festival's Best Horror Comedy, and it's out on DVD right now on Amazon.com, BestBuy.com, Target.com, just about any .com you can find. I've got three books out. Uh, one is a collection of multi-genre short stories called Dreaded Friday and Other Tales, a horror detective novel called The Alleys Ran Red, and under the nom de plume, Maxwell Robeson, a women's action-adventure novel called The Spy in Mom's Clothing. And also, look for, coming soon, Getting Schooled. If you want to see the trailer for that, you can do a search on Google for Indiegogo, Getting Schooled, Finishing Funds. Cool. Very cool. And that is all for me. So we have the Pope on Film, uh, which is a movie review show with the Pope of the Church of Ed Wood, the Reverend Steve Galindo. And we discuss whatever movie we really feel like. So, uh, we've done quite a few good ones. The Giant Claw, Rock of Ages, great episode. Um, The Monkey's Head, you know, the the band The Monkey's. Mm hmm. The movie Head. Head. Oh, yeah. Gotta see it. Um, And The Trip with Peter Fonda. Oh, Um, yeah. That can be found found either on iTunes, Stitcher, uh, or YouTube, and again, that's at Undead Count Film. Um, Bob, Bob is going strong. People are having a great reaction to Bob. Uh, that is also on YouTube. 
And that's um, Bob's Dirty Shorts, correct? That is Bob's Dirty Shorts. One of the most demented things you will see on the internet. <laughs> it will win. It will win the internet any day that you watch it. <laughs> yes, it will. And, and I just want to. I just. And I just wanted to pimp one more thing. If you'd care to see my short films, uh, they are oh, at yeah. youtube.com slash user slash WP2000. And uh, my friend Bunny here was a producer and cameraman and other things on many of the films, and uh, we had a great time making them. Yeah. Yeah. So that's it for me for this week of Dying Generation. Uh, remember, you can get us on, at dyinggeneration.com. At UndeadCow.com, we have our Facebook group, and we have our Twitter, Dying Generation, uh, also on Stitcher. That is it for me. Be good or be careful. That sounds good. I'm Stephen Scott Norfolk.